Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another Cricut tutorial. So today we are going to be doing infusible ink or sublimation blanks pot holders. So these come in sets, you can get them anywhere, I think from two to six to 12. I got like 10 of them, I don't know. They're not that expensive. They definitely like quality wise, you can tell they're not as nice as like nicer branded ones you might buy, but they are compatible with sublimation or infusible ink, which means you can customize them. No vinyl. The design is literally on here, which is perfect for things in the kitchen. You can use these in your oven. They are perfect for things that are seasonal. So you can use these for a month and then put them away. I love them. I did a few different SVGs. You can grab those for free at the bottom of the blog post. I will leave that link in the description, but we're going to get started on making these. You'll see that we started with this one and we learned a few things along the way. I love how they turned out. Stay tuned to the end and I will give you a close up. All right, y'all. So before we start um, cutting all of our pieces, and putting them onto our little oven mitts. I am going to just do a test to see if I can get my settings right. So the infusible ink that I'm using for the words, I know exactly how to press, but these pieces that I ordered with the fun little Christmas designs are a little bit of a wild, wild horse here. And then of course, using my easy press is a bit of a wild horse. So the actual oven mitts say to press them for 420 degrees for 20 seconds. Um, Cricut on the other hand says to press infusible ink onto this type of a surface for 390 for 20, 40 seconds for 40 seconds. Um, my easy press doesn't go up to 425. Um, so instead of 425 for 20 seconds or 390 for 40 seconds, we are going to do 400, which is the highest your easy press tube will go for 30 seconds. And we are going to see what that does. So I have taped my infusible ink sheet down here with a little bit of washi tape. We are going to press the easy press on it. Very, very still, very, very even pressure for the entire 30 seconds. And then we will lift it directly up and let it cool before we peel the transfer off. So let's give her a go. Make sure it covers the entire piece. Set it directly down. Even pressure, do not move, do not twitch, do not breathe. lift it directly up and set it back on the base. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because if this works, we're going to have to cut out our pieces. I can already see a bit of transfer, which is good. That means the paper is releasing. You want it to release. If it releases on its own, that usually means it has transferred properly. The problem here is that as it heats up, if you shift the easy press at all, it can create kind of a hazy kind of whatever. And that's what the washi tape helps with. So we'll see, we'll see if this worked or if we should leave off the pressure because the other way to do it would be to set it directly on top and don't touch it for 30 seconds. Oh, it looks pretty good. So you can see right through here, it didn't transfer perfectly, but you know, that is pretty good. It wrapped all the way around this side fairly well. This side, not as well, but I think that's because of this seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the design for the top here, and then we, we might try this again. I wanted a solid block of pattern. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. Look at it. It's a little Christmas oven mitt. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to jump into the actual Cricut part of the project now. 
So in order to do that, let's move all this away and actually cut our design files to add to our little oven mitts. And in case you didn't realize, I did use my easy press to actually iron these guys before I pressed it because they're quite wrinkly right out of the package. All right, cricket time, baby, cricket time. Just wanted to make sure before I got started that this was going to work and that I didn't need to alter my design files. All right, so I've got my infusible ink loaded on my cutting mat. You can see that I have this design here for my hearts, and then the words are going to be cut out of this red on the other side. I'm just gonna go over it with a brayer. Of course, infusible ink of all types is ink, which means you need to be using clean, dry hands whenever you touch it because otherwise you can smear the ink. So we're going to go ahead and load it in to cut the pattern from the hearts and then we'll flip it around and cut our words and you can see the difference here. When you take your infusible ink out of the package it's always going to look muted. It's not until after you add the heat and it heats up that it actually darkens to the bright color it's supposed to be. So, all right, let's, let's do it. Make sure, you know, you follow all those directions on Cricut Design Space, like remembering to mirror your design. Otherwise it won't cut out properly. Perfect. Perfect. All right, so there's the first side with our hearts. See those cute hearts? All right, so now we are going to turn it around. And since this guy comes on a roll, he wants to stay on a roll. All right, we're gonna pick infusible ink for this side as well. The infusible ink I'm using for this, it comes in this size for your Cricut Joy, 
or um, it's perfect for using the mug press, or it comes in the larger 12 by 12 sheets. This was actually the perfect size for our little pot holders, and I didn't have a large sheet, so I just went with it. Why not? All right, cross your fingers that this doesn't cause problems. It usually doesn't. looks like it worked perfect all right so we're gonna go ahead and weed this remember for infusible ink you don't want to tear it it's paper even though it is ink so we're actually just going to weed this with our fingers and then i will show you how to put the two pieces together because infusible ink can only be heated once you can't keep layering onto it um, for multiple infusible ink presses. Now you could layer something like iron on that has a carrier sheet over it and press, but infusible ink, one go. So, all right, so everything is weeded and now we are going to add the two pieces together. So if we follow how they're supposed to look on the design, we've got the two hearts above, we've got a heart at the end of Mary and we've got a heart over the C, right like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, cut this down. In those places, you can go ahead and cut this all the way up. Keeping your design merged or welded all together into one piece, it makes it really easy to then add everything together. It does use a bit more material for the, the design like this that is a lesser design, but we still have quite a bit of space in the middle, so we'll just save this for later. All right, all right. So now all we're going to do is line this up. Make sure it's in place. And then push it down. This is my favorite way to layer infusible ink onto one sheet. Quick and easy, now of course, we could have 
easily picked up these four hearts and put them on the part we cut away since they are fairly large objects to pick up, but this is easier. Work smarter, not harder. So now we're going to go ahead and place this on here. So let's go ahead and line it up. Ooh. And then we'll take it in place a little bit of heat resistant washi. Perfect. Smooth it down. Now the transfer backing carrier sheet, whatever you want to call the clear part of the back of this is actually pretty sticky. The heat resistant washi holds it in place because if we didn't want haziness on the bottom, we definitely don't want haziness on the works. All right, now when we place our easy press on this, we just need to make sure to completely avoid this bottom section because we cannot heat this back up or it will take away some of the color. Space. Heat this baby back up. It's the only bad part about doing these things in stages. And then we want to put this far enough down that again we can put our whole easy press up here without hitting that bottom section. And it is going to take a minute to hit 400. So we'll be back. All right, so again, we're gonna pull this down far enough, smooth it on, just line it up. Now we'll push down, be very, very still, and then lift straight up. straight up and now let it cool down before we move it around all right you can see all of the pieces are starting to lift up so that is perfect that's exactly what we want I'm going to start by taking the tape off and then slowly peeling it away Ooh, that's not not good okay so Several of these letters down here just didn't press at all. So, you know what? I'm gonna get out my little piece. So this is the problem with even pressure against a surface like this that is not quite even. I was worried about the pieces down in between. So I think the main things that didn't get hit are right in here. I go ahead and heat up my mini and see if I can just hit those pieces with even heat. It won't be ideal, um, but I think it will work. Let's heat this baby up. And this is why you slowly peel it away because you don't want to move anything from where it is. So if we reheat it in the wrong position, yeah, it'll transfer in the wrong position. <laughs> All right, let's give this a minute. Heat it up. We're gonna 
try to press it maybe twice, once here and once here. You wanna push straight down, hold on that spot and then move over, push down and hold. Don't swipe it around like an iron or do anything fancy. You wanna get as, as much as possible only the spots where you can tell like there's no halo around this H, it didn't transfer. This M didn't transfer. It won't hurt anything like if I just went over whisk, but the more you heat that ink, the less vibrant it will be. So then you'll end up with this kind of haziness where it's just not full color. But I'll leave a link below to a little um, makeup bag that I did with a Cricut Access file where I heated the entire thing with my little mini Easy Press. It's definitely possible, just not as easy. All right, so we're going to pick them up and I think we're gonna just go right here. little over on this side so I'm gonna go ahead and go like this it's better M looks like it's lifted on its own. So let's see. Missing a little down here. Let's hit this. pretty good it's just this one a that does not want to transfer and it it may just be that he is not gonna transfer at this point we've hit him with too much heat we'll see we'll see All right, Ooh. this little heart has like no pattern to him. Come on, little heart. There we go. That's pretty darn good. We whisk you a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. I'm pretty happy with that. I like these hearts better. This one just got the very bottom of Santa's belt. 
Um, so that would be the advantage of picking where the heart's placement is, but, but I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm gonna do the second one and maybe only use the mini easy press so I can make sure to get even coverage everywhere. Or maybe, I wish I had something I could put in here. Obviously I can't press it with my hand in, so we'll see. Let me go ahead and cut the other three designs and then I will be back to heat them up. All right, so I've got all of my designs cut out and we are going to go ahead and put them on our little oven mitts. We've got plenty of them. That is the one good thing about this pack. Well, not the one good thing, one of the good things. So we've got several of this design and then we have dun, 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 the flat design. So we're gonna start by ironing these out and then see what we can do. I think we'll start with a flat one on this surface and see if my easy press can press a flat one without the same issues that we're having with these super thick ridges because this is a lot less to get through than this. Start seeing if we can just iron this baby out a little. Get all those wrinkles out. Design lined up, and we want the little at the top. So push this down in the center here. Smooth it on. Hold it in place here. Just a tip, you can see I have two different carrier sheets on the back, and that's because when I combined the red and the patterned on this one, I didn't have quite enough to put these hearts up here, so just grabbed a little bit of carrier sheet from part I wasn't using and splice it together. All right, our big easy press is done, so let's see if this will press a flat one.
Looks good from out here, but of course we have to wait till it's cooler to see. Ooh, maybe it's peeling up pretty good already. It's not really the peeling that you need to wait on. It's that it's hot, hot, hot to the touch. I mean, 400 degrees, y'all. Okay, so flat one is great. Look how cute that is. Okay, that's exciting. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove this and let this guy set aside. Oh, that's very exciting. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try once more with this guy. Constant pressure. I pushed down quite a bit on this one. We'll see if that makes a difference or if it really is the ridges in this pot holder. Good. Much better. All right, we're sensing a pattern here. Pressure is key with these guys. That looks so cute. Oh, okay. I'm getting excited. I was afraid this whole project was gonna be a wash after I did that first one. All right, I need another flat. Need another flat one. So these guys, the reason they're so wrinkled is that they come shrink wrapped in this bag. <laughs> but I mean, bear. All right. This guy might need some persuasion to be a flat, pretty pot holder. This is literally just a patterned heart. I just wanted one, at least one that was very simple. just straight down into the middle across the bar trying to keep the even pressure that is I mean that's the one main benefit of an easy press over say an iron is that it heats up evenly 400 degrees 300 degrees whatever you need across the entire surface plate and so the big bar lets you really push down evenly across the piece I know princess it's pretty cool as opposed to an iron that the thermal heating is all over the place. Oh yeah, we're cooking with gas now. Look, look how cute, look. Look how cute that is. This is like a whole set. All right. So I need a little backing for this one. So we're gonna reuse this. No reason not to. The way I put this guy together. Whoop. Just had the backing behind the Mrs. Claus Cookie and Co. Not the whole heart. That is the one 
well, not the one, but that is one of the things with Cricut's infusible ink that I really like is their carrier sheet is really thick and nice and it works consistently, <laughs> which is nice. As opposed to this infusible ink that I bought on Amazon, it, running through my Cricut, it's very thin. Definitely the carrier sheet is very thin, but you know, it works. It's just not as good. Same with these oven mitts though. They are, uh, they're cute. They're great for a season. I think they're great for seasonal decor like Christmas that you're only going to have out for a little bit. I'm not sure that they're good enough quality. I'd want them out all the time because I just don't think they'd hold up to everyday use. All right. There we go. So excited, you guys. All right, let's check this one. Okay, yeah, pressure is key. Pressure is key. So a part of me wants to remake this one. I don't know though. They're still pretty cute. All right, y'all. I'm going to go lay these out and give you the final look. All right, y'all, I hope you liked this project as much as I did. I think these are perfect for Christmas. Even if you didn't do the patterns, they'd be really cute with um, whatever colors or designs you like. Obviously, I'm doing pink and um, <laughs> seafoam, blush and seafoam for Christmas. I could use blush and seafoam colored infusible inks to make these with my SVGs, they would be perfect. I might do that because I have another five of these and give this set to my mom since they're more traditional colors and they would go perfect with her kitchen. So if you liked this project, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, show your mom. See you in the next one.